What you're going to see here is the amount of power coming out of the antenna. So right now, there's no power. If I had this connected, there'd be no power. But when I do this, oh, then the whole 100 watts comes out. When I do that, it's zero. 100 watts, zero. Say, wait a minute. That's only two situations on and off. How do you get to do 26 letters of the alphabet and commas and periods and everything else with only two on and off? Ah, you do two things. You change the length of time that you're on. See, like, there's a short one here, there's a long one here. And you change the length of time between the characters. So this happens to be S, O, S. Stop. See? So that's what Morse code's all about, okay? So specific on and off sequences correspond to letters of the alphabet and punctuation. International Morse code is called CW, continuous wave. And you say, well, gee, how much frequency does that take up? It's called bandwidth. When they say bandwidth, they're saying, how much frequency does it take up when that transmitter transmits? And here's an answer you need to memorize. About 150 hertz, okay? You can send Morse code using a straight key. Now this is what's called a straight key. I used this Morse code key in 1957 when I got my license. This was it. But today, the Morse code people, they want to do that. They have these funny things called electronic keyers. When they push this side, that's the dot. When they push this side, that's the long on the dash. And it's so smart. The radio is so smart. I don't have to go dip, 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 da, 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 dip, dip, dip. As long as they hold it over here, the radio goes dip, 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 da, 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 electronic here. So the new Morse code people, this is the kind of thing they use. <laughs> you don't have to worry about it, you probably will never use Morse code. Okay. Now let's move a little farther. There's no questions here. But this is going to teach you how some of this works now in the real world. Here I am, I'm talking. Let's say I'm talking around this room. What's the frequency of the waves coming out of my mouth? between 300 hertz and 3,000 hertz, kilohertz. Okay, I've got a radio station somewhere in LA on 1,070 kilohertz. What station is that? 1070 on your dial. KNX. Oh, where's the KNX transmitter located? At Hawthorne and 190th Street, right behind the car garage there. Out in the big field, there's giant antennas. Let's see now, up in Hollywood is where they're doing their talking. Down here is where they have their transmitter. They send the audio somehow down to the transmitter station. And now there's some electronics that has to take that audio and hook it onto that signal, right? That carrier. And here's what it does. You notice it's, it's got it right here on the higher side, and it's got the mirror image of the audio on the lower side. Wow. And what's the total bandwidth that it takes up? over the radio, about six kilohertz wide, because this is about three kilohertz wide of audio, so three kilohertz here. So on 1070 in the dial, this signal goes from what? 1067 to 1073, there you go. Now, what happens is this, and again, no questions. As I, as I talk here, the amplitude of what I do here changes the amplitude here. It makes sense, doesn't it? It's like I'm on a speaker. I talk into the speaker, a little thing, and outcomes on the speaker, okay? So audio modulation can be on each side of the carrier, yep. And the amplitude increases and decreases as my voice de increases and decreases. Hence, this is called amplitude modulation, AM. So just into your AM radio, this is what's happening. Now, with that as the background, now we'll get to the ones that have any questions. Uh, well, excuse me a little bit more about AM. Modulation is a process of combining in uh, an information signal with a radio signal. So there's the information signal, there's the carrier. Communicate, okay, the modulator circuit in a transmitter combines the audio. So inside here, there's a modulator circuit. And it combines the audio that I'm talking into with the carrier. Okay, that's the only thing you gotta memorize. Now let's get on to the real guys. But it turns out that this takes six kilohertz of bandwidth. Well, let's assume that from this wall to that wall was a frequency band. And everybody that was talking, every six kilohertz was about this wide. That means two people could be talking and using this much space. Two people could be talking using this much. Well, you can only have so many people talking over the bandwidth of that hand band, okay? So someone came up with a different process. They said, wait a minute. 
someone found out that, let's say you had 100 watts in that transmitter, AM. Well, it turns out that half of the power winds up in this carrier. Okay, so what? Well, the other half is split between here and here. But when I listen to you at the other end, I'm not listening to the carrier. I don't, I'm only listening to one of these side bands. So here's what they did. They said, we're gonna come up with some electronics that takes most of the energy out of the carrier, it suppresses it. So maybe out of the 100 watts, maybe one watts in the carrier, I've got 99 watts left. Oh, now let's get rid of one of the audio side bands, say the left one. That means 99 watts are here. You say, well, so what? Well, when I hear you, when I hear this station, it's going to be much louder than when I hear this station. Over here, I'm listening to the 25 watts. Over here, I'm listening to 99 watts. So single side beam is louder. Okay? So here's their question. Single side beam is a form of AM. Yeah, for sure it is. The approximate bandwidth is 3 kilohertz. Why? Because I'm only using half of what I started with, 6 kilohertz. So that's an easy one to remember. Okay? Now, single side beam, just for what it's worth, that is the most popular version. If someone says, I'm using a microphone, they're either using FM on radios like this, but on the, high, the HF frequencies that we'll talk about later, it's the predominant microphone mode is single side band. So those are the only two things you remember. Now, uh, you say, gee, well, you, uh, you eliminated the lower one. Could you have eliminated the upper one and kept the lower one? Yeah, could have. So, when I use the lower one and suppress the upper one, get rid of the upper one, it's called lower side band, LSB. And when I get rid of the bottom one and use upper one, it's called upper side band. Well, see, well, why, why do we do that? I don't know why they do that, but that's what they did. But now, here's what happens. At that frequency right here, 10 megahertz, if I have a radio like this one here, and I say, oh, I want to go to the side band mode. That's good. But if I'm going to be on a frequency above 10, it'll automatically switch me to upper side band. And if I'm going to be on a frequency lower than 10, uh, or a hand band, it'll switch me to lower side band. So, upper side band is 10, USB, upper side band, above 10 megahertz is an amateur radio guideline. It's not an FCC rule. The FCC doesn't care what we use. Cam said, let's just all get together. Now, when you buy a radio, the manufacturers understand that. So, if I'm on 28 megahertz band, and I switch to single side band mode, it'll automatically put me in upper side band. Could I switch it? I could, but we don't. So here's all I want to know. So on the 10 meter band, which is 28 megahertz, and if you're on any of the hand bands up here, or any of the hand bands up here, you would normally use upper side band, yes, if you're in the single side band mode. That's all you got to memorize. Nothing else to memorize. Okay, now this one gets a little tricky. Now let's say we got someone talking somewhere, and we got a transmitter that transmits on 101.1 megahertz. What station is that one? FM, here's 101. Okay? So here's their transmitter, here's their someone talking at the station or playing music. And something different happens. Now I, I'm not able to show all the little lines, but let me just go back here. Okay, you remember this all here? Remember that? Make that a nice square piece and make this a, sort of a square piece and you get one of these, right? You get that thing right there. So instead of this thing being in the middle, like it was on AM, there's the carrier. And when I start talking, everything shifts left and right. Shift, 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 back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Okay? So the carrier shifts back and forth and it takes the audio with it. And when a carrier shift is called deviation, not a question, okay? Now, the amount of frequency deviation is set by the amplitude of my voice. So the softer I talk, the less the carrier shifts. The louder I talk, the more that carrier shifts back and forth. So, uh, what have I got? I have frequency modulation, FM. This is how FM works, okay? So when the deviation increases, the signal occupies more bandwidth. So when the deviation gets more and more, this takes more bandwidth. So if, I, if I'm talking soft, this might only take five kilohertz. If I'm talking loud, it might take <coughs> six kilohertz. Okay? This is FM. FM. Okay. A little bit more about FM. If uh, you are using a handheld, right, right here. Uh, 
handhelds are primarily FM transmitters. This is what they transmit FM. They can receive other modes, they transmit FM. See, so if you're using an HT right here, or a mobile radio, and you're told that you are over deviating, now if, if you talk way too loud, this move is too far left and right. And what happens is, the person's radio who's receiving you says, okay, I'll only receive things that are inside of here. So if this thing shifts beyond my hand, the radio doesn't hear it. If you're over deviating, the shifting is too far and it's outside of what the radio is listening to. So, how do you stop that? Easy. You lower your voice or you just back away from the radio a little bit. That's it. Okay? So when you're using these puppies, this is not what you want to do. That's an over deviation for sure. Okay? And the person at the other end could say, oh, you're all garbled up. Uh, you must be doing something wrong. Just back away from the radio and talk a little softer and the problem gets solved. Okay? So what is the bandwidth here? Well, 5 to 15 kilohertz, typically. Okay? Typically. Okay. Okay, this is a little bit of history. No questions. In the old days, like when I got my license, you had two pieces of equipment. You had a receiver that received all the things, and you had a transmitter. Okay, bingo. Well, today, we don't have receivers and transmitters anymore. We have one thing. They're called trans, trans, receivers, receivers, okay? Transceivers, and they're in one unit. Okay, that's what we buy, okay? Bingo, transceiver. So, uh, I can talk into it. Uh, there's, so there's a microphone where I can talk in, <coughs> there's a speaker, you get the sound out. I have an antenna on it, and some of these things, not this one, but some of these things will plug right into the wall out of it, okay? Again, this is just a block diagram, there's no questions. Okay, some of these things though, like the, and I have to give you these background because there'll be questions that lead up to this, that's why I use some spectrum. This thing here is a mobile radio. It goes in a car. Plug this into here, hook these wires onto the battery. Oh, that's a novel idea. These aren't too expensive, eight, nine hundred bucks. What if I want to use this in the house? Ooh, I can buy this thing called a power supply, plug this into the wall, right, 120 volts. This thing converts 120 volts to 12 volts DC. They go all right here, okay? So I can run this radio in the house or in a car, okay? So a mobile transceiver runs off the car battery. When you use a mobile transceiver to home, you buy a power supply. The power supply will convert the AC to the DC, just like it look like a car. And that's very common for people to do that. Uh, okay. Well, there's no questions here. See, all of these things used to have questions here. Take another question. Is it 8.30 yet? 8.15 yet? Um, I don't know. What time we got? Yeah, 8.15. 8.15? Okay, so I'm going to stop right there. Okay. <laughs>